Monty Collier Report. I'm Monty Collier. Two very popular theologians still living today are Miller J. Erickson, who is 89, and Wayne Grudem, age 73. They are both Baptists, and many today consider these two characters to be Calvinists, or at least Calvinistic. Each wrote a systematic theology, and each theology has gone through several editions. Their systematic theologies can usually be found in most major bookstores across the United States. Now, neither Erickson nor Grudem are actually Calvinists. Neither are they Calvinistic, for that matter. So, for example, a person is Calvinistic if that person holds to the five solas of the Protestant Reformation. A person is a Calvinist, for example, if that person not only holds to the five solas of the Protestant Reformation, but if that person also holds to covenant theology, which of course is also taught by Scripture alone. Though certainly not infallible, and no confession written by any mere human is, the covenant theology that I am speaking of here is best summarized, for the moment at least I think so, by the Westminster Confession of Faith. So if you haven't read that confession, invite you to do so. So even if Grudem and Erickson were Calvinistic, and they are not, they would not be Calvinists, for neither hold to covenant theology. Baptists, by definition, reject covenant theology. But that's exactly why Baptists withhold baptism from infants, for they hold to believer's baptism, not covenant baptism. Of course, there are other strong reasons for rejecting the theology of Erickson and Grudem. Both, for example, teach the heresy of justification by faith and works, which is better known today as lordship salvation. Now, that heresy is a denial of sola fide, justification by faith alone. Such heresy is lordship salvation, and the fact that these two men teach it indicates that Erickson and Grudem lack a Incredible profession of faith. You see, they are teaching a false gospel, one that is akin to the pagan blasphemy of Roman Catholicism, not biblical Christianity. But in this video, I will be concentrating on Erickson and Grudem's rejection of sola scriptura, not the rejection of sola fide. Both Baptist theologians reject sola scriptura, and by that I mean the Bible alone to be the Word of God, when they deny a literal six-day creation on the basis of claims made by modern empirical science, which they consider to be an equal source of truth rather than Scripture alone being the only source of truth, the only monopoly on truth. Like Roman Catholicism, which considers tradition to be an equal source of authority and truth, and which insists that the Bible be interpreted through official Roman Catholic tradition, Erickson and Grudem view empirical science to be authoritative, a source of truth equal to Scripture, and even an effective and trustworthy tool to interpret the Bible. Erickson, for example, rejects a literal six-day creation for what he calls a modified form of the age-day theory. This is a human theory of creation not logically deduced from Scripture alone. Instead, the one who holds this theory presupposes that empirical science is a trustworthy source of truth and seeks to interpret the Bible in a manner that does not contradict current scientific findings. Now, I emphasize current scientific findings, for scientific findings are never certain. They are based on, and comprised of, guesses, which are often called conjecture. They are also based on subjective experience, of course, because it's empirical. Now science, because it is incapable of closing its inductions, can only provide facts, not truth. Facts are guesses based on observation and tested to some degree, but always with a margin of error. In contrast, truth is propositional. 
certain, unchanging, and eternal, revealed by the omniscient God of the Bible alone, and specially found today in the Bible alone. That being said, Erickson writes the following, and I quote, The age day theory is based upon the fact that the Hebrew word yom, while it most frequently means a 24-hour period, is by no means limited to that meaning. It can also mean epochs, or long periods of time. That is how it should be understood in this context. This view holds that God created in a series of acts over long periods of time. The, geo the geological and fossil records correspond to the order of his creative acts. At present, the view which I find most satisfactory is a variation of the age-day theory. While the age-day theory seems the most plausible conclusion at present, we cannot be dogmatic. And any view that is to be acceptable, given the understanding of the Bible and of general revelation adopted earlier in this volume, must be in accord with both the biblical data and the scientific data." End quote. Christian Theology, Part 4, Chapter 17, pages 381 through 383. The emphasis is mine. Notice the only views acceptable are those that agree with and hold to empirical science as a source of truth. Erickson is clearly stating that the view of scripture alone, the literal six-day creation, is not acceptable. Erickson has rejected sola scriptura. Now we look at what Wayne Grudem has to say, and I quote, Scientific investigation has helped Christians reevaluate what earlier generations thought about the age of the earth, for example, so that no evangelical scholar today would hold that the world was created 4004 BC. Yet that date was once widely believed to be the date of creation because of the writings of Irish Archbishop James Usher, 1581 to 1656, one of the greatest scholars of his day who carefully added together the dates and the genealogies of the Bible to find when Adam was created." In quote. Systematic Theology, Chapter 15, page 273. Notice Grudem appeals to quote-unquote scientific investigation, not scripture alone. Grudem assumes, like Miller does, that scientific investigation is a legitimate source of truth and a reliable tool we can use to evaluate the meaning of the Bible. So you see that Grudem has also rejected sola scriptura. Well, Grudem goes on to state the following blasphemous claim, and I quote, Finally, we can view this controversy with some expectancy that there will be further progress in scientific understandings of the age of the earth. It is likely that scientific research in the next 10 or 20 years will tip the weight of evidence decisively toward either a young earth or an old earth view, and the weight of Christian scholarly opinion from both biblical scholars and scientists will begin to shift decisively in one direction or another. This should not cause alarm to advocates of either position because the truthfulness of Scripture is not threatened. Our interpretations of Genesis 1 have enough uncertainty that either position is possible. End quote. Systematic Theology, Chapter 15, pages 308 through 309. Now, who can fail to see that this heretic must wait on quote-unquote scientific research to tell him how he must read and interpret the Bible? Grudem has cast out sola scriptura, Grudem has rejected the Calvinist teaching that the Bible alone is the only infallible interpreter of Holy Scripture, for he is no Calvinist, nor is he Calvinistic. Grudem's blasphemous claim that the humanist views are possible is outrageous. If it is possible for the universe to have been created in a span of billions of years rather than six literal days, then the Bible is false. The Bible is not false. So, from the impossibility of the Bible contradicting itself, 
we can conclude from its immediate and greater context that God created all things in six literal days. Miller J. Erickson and Wayne Grudem are dead wrong. We will now close with a few words from another old Calvinist who thought the world was closing on 6,000 years in his time. Quote, The present world is drawing to a close before it has completed its 6,000th year. If Scripture does not direct us in our inquiries after God, we immediately turn vain in our imaginations. With the same view, Moses relates that the work of creation was accomplished not in one moment, but in six days. By this statement, we are drawn away from fiction to the one God who thus divided his work into six days." End quote. It was John Calvin, his Institutes of the Christian Religion, Book 1, Chapter 14, Sections 1, 2. Calvin also says, and I quote, nor is it unimportant to observe that he divided the formation of the world into six days, though it had been in no respect more difficult to complete the whole work in all its parts in one moment than by a gradual progression. Institutes of the Christian Religion, Book 1, Chapter 14, Section 22 this time. Notice John Calvin, who lived from 1509 to 1564, lived, wrote, and died long before Archbishop Usher, who lived from 1581 to 1656. Usher's book, which dated the creation of the world to be 4004 BC, was titled The Annals of the World. You could usually get a copy of this somewhere online. I encourage you to look for that, add that to your library. Now how did Calvin and Usher come to this literal six-day creation view? How come they didn't wait for scientific empirical research to tell them how they are to read the Bible? Well, I'll tell you, they both held to sola scriptura. Notice Calvin says that any view which disagrees with that of the Bible alone is a fiction and a vain imagination. Think about that. He's calling modern empirical science fictitious. Also note how Calvin rejects the quote-unquote old earth notion that God created the universe over a long period of gradual increments. This Christian institute closes the door on the humanist philosophical views of evolution circulating even in Calvin's day, which was long before Charles Darwin put pen to paper. For example, see an Eximander. Greek philosopher. So Calvin and Usher are correct, and Erickson and Grudem are Lordship Salvation heretics who reject Sola Scriptura and Sola Fide. I close with this quote from the Bible. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger, that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11. God bless.